Hello there, Bruce Simpson again from RC Model Reviews. Another techy bench video today, because as you all know, I can't fly. Um, too dangerous by far. So what I've got here is a little setup because the other day I was looking on Hobby King and I found that they're carrying these. Look, they really are. No, they're not those mints with a hole in the middle. It's a ferrite toroid. A toroid because that's the shape. It's a basically it's a you know, looks like a piece of pipe that's been cut into a thin segment it's a donut of ferrite and ferrite's an interesting material it's a it's a form of iron that um, has interesting magnetic properties and why would hobby king be selling little ferrite toroids i mean you might think hmm, not, you can't fly this can you well the reason is actually quite uh, interesting it's because these things are equivalent to an electrical flywheel that's the best way this way i like to put it they're an electrical flywheel or magnetic flywheel really because what they can do is they can smooth out the flow of electricity and that's important because in our models we're reliant on ele electricity for so many things that are power feed to the radio control gear the power feed to the ESC and the motor it's all electricity so when you get a disrupted flow of electricity bad things can happen and in the old days of 72 megs long wire stuff um, it would cause a lot of interference with your radio gear if you had a lot of noise which is disrupted flow of electricity now what i've got here on the bench is a little setup because i'm going to have a look and show you just what these ferrite rings will do and why you might want to buy some now first up here's what i've got on the bench i've got a little electric motor here it's just it's actually out of a servo it's a servo motor and i've wired it through here the red wire goes off to the positive wire from my power supply the black wire goes off to the negative power from my power supply i've also got my oscilloscope probe here connected up so we can actually see what's happening to that electricity you can see if there's any noise on there and if we go up here to the oscilloscope you can see that because sure, uh, first of all look, you can see we've got i'm just feeding 1.7 volts in here just 20 milliamps just enough to drive the motor and create some noise you can see the noise here now i'm going to focus in on the scope a bit better so you can see what's happening right here's the oscilloscope and as you can see these little spikes here this is actually what we call noise it's a momentary increase or decrease in the voltage this this line here is the voltage going into our motor and as you can see there's, there's all little spikes of noise appearing there and you might wonder where are they coming from well this is a dc motor so it has what they call a commutator basically there's a little uh, system inside that switches the electricity rapidly between the different poles of the motor so as to ensure it rotates it, you've all pulled apart electric motors you know how they work and every time it switches from one core one pole on the uh, core to another you get a little spike caused by the sudden change in electricity as one electromagnet is de-energized the next one's energized and it causes a momentary spike of noise and that noise there is um, stuff that can interfere with your radio gear it can put lines on your uh, fpv equipment and it can come from a number of sources i've used an electric motor because it's a convenient source uh, i just had to solder it up of course the noise sources on your models can be a lot of different things everything from um, fpv transmitters to little um, switching becks all sorts of things can create this this type of noise and other types of noise so that's what we've got here if we look carefully we can see that it's about this there's, there's divisions on the oscilloscope here that about one and a half to two divisions on average sometimes you get a bigger one sometimes you get a smaller one so that's how high it is about two divisions high on the oscilloscope screen so that's without a ferrite toroid in there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put a ferrite toroid in and we'll see what happens to the noise okay what i've done i've just disconnected the positive lead and to add a ferrite toroid you just run the wire that's containing the noise run it run around through the hole in the toroid like so but hard to do when you're trying to be cameraman as well as wire winder and you put as many about as many turns as you can actually comfortably fit on there you might have seen this a lot of switching becks or u-becks come with these ferrite cores already on there um, because they know that they reduce the amount of noise and i might have a look at that a little later but there you go i've just put a, a just a few turns we'll set three or four turns on the toroid there and now i'm going to connect it all back up the way i had it before so I connect up to my power supply a little motor starts spinning and then i connect up my oscilloscope so i can measure the noise that's coming out of here And we'll go back and have a look at the oscilloscope screen. Oops, better go the other way. Here we go. Now you can see we've still got noise, but now it's, it's less than one division on the oscilloscope. We've cut the noise down by uh, easily 50% just by putting a couple of turns on that toroidal core. And that's, that's basically going to reduce the noise that the rest of our system sees. It's, it's quite a significant reduction in the noise level just by putting a few turns of wire on a toroid core and that's noise from electric motor so 
That's what these toroids are for. They're for reducing noise that might be coming down the wire. So there you go. You see that the little ferrite toroid core here made quite a difference to the spiky noise coming from that motor. And in fact, these are best for dealing with high frequency noises. And a high frequency noise is something that's really spiky. The frequency means that the voltage goes up very quickly or comes down very quickly. And when you're dealing with that, these things will knock the snot out of it. Really, really handy if you're trying to get rid of noise in your systems. Not so handy for low frequency noises. And I found that because I was going to do a comparison showing you UBEX with and without a ferrite core. Switching becks, I thought, hey, this ferrite core's really got to knock the noise out of a switching beck. So I've got, where am I here? Somewhere I've got some, yeah, here's a, here's a Hobby King switching beck, five amp switching beck from Hobby, Hobby King. Um, nicely made unit, great. I put it on the scope, fair bit of noise coming out of here, about 250 millivolts of noise. And I thought, ooh, you know, that's with the toroid on. I thought, oh, if I take the toroid off, I wonder how much I'll get. I took the toroid off, it didn't change. Nothing was exactly the same, so. Because this is switching at about, I don't know, 50 kilohertz, it's a relatively low frequency, the toroid just doesn't make any difference. It just makes no difference at all, so it's just extra weight. In fact, I noticed some other manufacturers, where are we, got another one here somewhere. Here's another manufacturer, I think this one's from RC Timer. It doesn't seem to be made to quite the same quality, but it, it just has a lead with no ferrite on it. But it's actually lower noise. There's less noise coming out of this than out of the one with the toroid, ferrite toroid on it. So it's, a, it's not what you'd assume. You can't always judge it you know, book by its cover. And this really leads me to thinking, oh, I'm going to have to have a closer look at these switching becks and see how they perform and how much noise they make and all that sort of stuff. Because, it, you know, it, price isn't an indicator. Uh, and certainly as far as noise goes, but if it's only noise. And I have to admit that noise out of these things, eh, it's, it's not an issue. Um, I've used these Hobby King ones. They work just fine. 250 millivolts of noise on a 5 or 6 volt output. Um, it gets cut off when it goes into your receiver or your servos, there's voltage regulators. So where you have um, five volts with noise on it, it slices it down to 3.3 volts anyway, so the noise gets cut off. So it doesn't matter if your switching becks putting out a bit of noise, really isn't gonna be an issue at all. But then again, why would you wanna carry around extra weight when you don't have to? Won't hurt, doesn't seem to be helping. Um, so there you go. Now, the other thing, of course, where you wanna use these ferrite cores sometimes is, as I say, spiky noise. And one thing that produces spiky noise is the ignition system on gas planes. The CDI ignitions on gas planes produces really, really big spikes of noise. Um, it's mitigated to quite a degree because you have screened cables to the spark plugs and shielded things around the spark plugs, but you still get noise. And in the old days of the 72 megahertz, that noise was quite a problem. A lot of systems, you know, that have difficulty with interference from the engine causing the radio gear to glitch. Of course, 2.4, it doesn't matter because 2.4 operates way above all the noise that is created there. However, some parts of your radio system will pick up that spark noise. It won't come in through the aerial, through the antenna, but it can come in through the servo leads. And I've seen gas, gas planes, especially large ones with long extension leads, where the extension leads themselves are acting as an antenna. And they feed that spark noise into the servos or into the receiver, which causes glitching. The way to cure that, put a few turns of your servo leads around one of these ferrites where it goes into the servo, and a few turns around the extension before it plugs into the receiver. So you have one ferrite on each end, completely, almost completely obliterates that noise, as it did with our little electric motor experiment, cut it by half, and it'll cut down the, the ignition noise. Now I know some of the early spectrum gear was quite susceptible to noise picked up on the servo leads in large gas planes. I'm sure they'll fix that by now, I don't know, because they never send me anything to test, and I don't intend to buy any spectrum gear, because uh, to be honest, Spectrum is fine, it works. The, the new DSMX, it's great. As I said, it's, it, it's set a new standard, um, but I'm happy with what I fly, so I don't need to buy DX uh, whatever just to prove that it works, because people know it works. Right, so there you go. Um, ferrite beads, they've opened up a whole new door of interest, because now, yeah, I'm gonna do some more research on these Ubex, and I'll share it with you. We'll put them all on the bench, we'll see how they work under heavy load, what the noise is like, and it was all because I wanted to show you how a little ferrite bead worked. Now, um, these ferrite toroids, if you've, if you've got some extra space in your order, buy some, because you'll find a use for them. You really will. It's, it's amazing where th th these things pop up. You might be building a model one day and you have a glitchy, noisy problem. What can I do? Lines on your FPV or, or um, your servos are twitching. If you've got one of these in your little spare parts box, throw it on. Who knows? Might fix it. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up so other people can find it. Comments, um, questions on the description on the bottom as usual. And... Stay tuned because there'll be more videos coming up very soon, unfortunately, from the bench. Bye for now.